Welcome. In the next five minutes we're going to have a look how easy it is to set up a web load test for your web application using Microsoft Azure, Application Insights and in fact Visual Studio to Team Services. For the purpose of this we're just going to set up a quick test, simple one for this blog. First let's log into the Microsoft Azure portal and if you haven't already you've got to set up a application insights workspace so if you haven't got one just click on the plus and additional services find application insights and set one up in this case I've already got one set up from earlier so let's scroll down to performance testing click on that one and what we'll see next is a panel that shows us any performance tests web application performance tests that are already set up or in fact if we don't have any we can create a new one in this case there's one from earlier but we want to set up a new one so we click on that and on the next blade you can see new performance test you've got to give it a name the type in our case a manual but there's also Visual Studio web tests for multi-step uh, more complicated complex tests then we need to grab the URL that we actually want to test as I said a simple test which is a single URL in our case copy that into the URL field click on done also change the name of this particular test and you can pick the location you can actually generate these loads from various uh, Azure data centers across the world so in our case we pick Southeast Asia pick the user load we don't want to go too hard on the blog so we just pick uh, 20 concurrent users and the duration of the actual web test. Click on run test and voila there is the new test and that test is actually in a queued status. When you click on the test you get a new blade and you can see here that the the status of this thing is currently acquiring resources so in the background Azure must be going away I would imagine here um, and set up all the load generators all the machines that will then actually simulate the user load and hit up the URL that you configured this can take quite some time as you can see here we're 14 minutes uh, uh, of wait time before the test starts While we wait, we can click on that info messages and actually see a little bit of information as to the status, uh, acquiring the resources, etc., where the um, test is actually up to. From here on, really, it's sit back, uh, relax, and wait for it all to happen. Clicking on the request widget, we can see whether there have been any failures and essentially further details on the requests. We can see that it's now kicked in with uh, a percentage counter. Essentially, the test is now in progress. can now see details on the request clicking on it and uh, it will show us whether there have been any errors in our case here we've had seven uh, so far you can also see response times user load etc this will now start to uh, plot out and the test will run for the next couple of minutes and we can actually observe the uh, request count 
as both successes and failures counting up as well as the line plot chart of the actual performance. Still counting up, up at 78%. We're almost done. Of course, under normal circumstances, you would have your other monitoring uh, in place for, let's say, infrastructure type metrics like CPU and RAM consumption, etc., so that you can predict and assess how your application behaves and how it holds up on the load, as well as your infrastructure if indeed you are running it on, uh, on uh, virtual machines. And that's really all there is to it. You can see the test is now complete and you can see the test results retrospectively as well. You can rerun the test down the track if you like so that you can compare the uh, results, the response times, run times, etc. with your previous run and get a feel for whether your application is still behaving itself. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video and got something out of it. A little bit more than five minutes, but um, I hope you don't mind. See you next time.